Aha. One moment. <gasps> oh, God! Oh. Valerie, please. Please, don't be frightened. I, I realize what a shock this must be seeing me like this, but I... I was desperate. I had to... Uh, I had no place else to turn. Who are you? I'm Skylar Whitney. Skylar Whitney is dead. I realize how difficult this must be for you to understand, but please just listen to me. Just hear me out. Well, you have to give me a moment. I, I feel like I'm in shock. Yes, I can appreciate that, and I'm sorry. But just listen to what I have to say, please. I am not a ghost. This is flesh and blood. I am the real Skylar Whitney. How can you be? For three years, there's been a man who's been posing as me. That man now lies in a grave with the name Skylar Whitney above him. That man is an imposter. That can't be true. I knew him. It is the truth. I swear to you, it's the truth. Three years ago, I had an accident, a plane crash. You may have heard about it. You may even remember that I invited you to go on that trip with me. Since then, I've thanked God a thousand times that you didn't come with me. I remember the invitation. You see, as we were going over the Alps, I ran into a blizzard. The plane went down. And that was the first thing that I could remember after almost two years. Two years? Two years. Two years of my life gone, when I was practically comatose. And are you all right now? Yeah. Yeah, I had uh, some sort of brain injury. They said it probably was a result of the uh, trauma from the crash or the exposure or something. Where were you all that time? I was in a hospital in Switzerland. In Bern. And the people at the hospital couldn't identify you. By that time, they had long since given up trying. You see, I hadn't filed a flight plan when I left St. Moritz. I wasn't the type of person who was terribly concerned about regulations. And when they found me, my wallet and my money belt were gone. The only thing I had on me was a photograph. A photograph? Yes. A photograph of me and a young woman. A young woman that only I could identify as Valerie Bryson. And then uh, I began to get better little by little. I began to realize who I was, what my past had been, what my future would be. And then I found out that someone else was living my future for me. This story is so incredible. See, even after I had gotten back my strength and I could talk, no one would listen to me. Except for two people. At least they gave me the benefit of the doubt. Who are they? One was a nurse, a British nurse. The other was a friend of hers. And between the two of them, they looked after me when I was in the hospital. But even with their help, it took almost a year before I was able to get back on my feet. Before I was able to come back here to Monticello. To face my double. But now he's dead. But now he's dead. But the woman that he married is alive. And she has my name my identity.
Something you want, lady? Yes, there's something I want. I want to get out of here. Hey, sorry. I have nothing to do with whether you're in or out. I just lock the doors or unlock them whenever they tell me. Wait a minute. How dare you walk away from me like that? Don't you know who I am? I am Mrs. Schuyler Whitney. So? So I'm sure you've heard the name. Oh, yeah, I think I've heard of it. Your old man killed somebody, too, right? I did not kill anybody. See you later, Mrs. Whitney. Wait a minute. Can you at least tell me why I am locked up in this dungeon when I haven't even had a chance to talk to my attorney? Well, we're a little shorthanded tonight. We don't have enough manpower to post a guard. Down here, we don't need one. It's the rules, lady. I am not a criminal. I am a victim of circumstances. <laughs> you know, it's funny how often I hear that from people. It's true. This woman came in and she tried to kill her boyfriend. Her boyfriend? Hmm. I heard it was your boyfriend. Well, at least you got rid of the competition, honey. That is not what happened. We were struggling for a gun oh, and she... Oh, that's a good one. Yes, that's a favorite. She made you shoot her, right? She did. Look, lady, I'm just a cop. Save your story for the judge, all right? Wait a minute, please. Honey, my job is to make sure that you stay here until the law is ready to deal with you. Be a good girl, all right? Don't go, please. I don't want to be alone. Wait! This is the most exciting night of my entire life. Hi, how pretty. Hi, Miss. I can't Hi, wait to play my part. Hi. Well, this is a funny place to be in your night off. Well, you're telling me. Uh, two copies. Chance. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, well, you certainly could have played my part, Mitzi. I am definitely having regrets about this entire affair. But you played it so well. I mean, hey, you are a detective. <laughs> yeah, sure. You don't look too happy about it. I thought everything went so well. Everything did go so well. I mean, Raven's really convinced that she killed Jinx Avery. She's really convinced that the police actually arrested her. And she deserved it, if you ask me. Yeah, well, deserve it or not, I am beginning to feel pretty dumb about getting involved in this whole thing. But, Calvin, it was all done in the name of justice. That is not what I was taught about justice, Mitzi. Well, I can't wait to play my part. I, yeah? You know, it is a small role, of course. What are you going to do? They are throwing me in the cell next to Raven Whitney. Yes, what? Well, you know. No, I don't. Tell me. Slow night, isn't it? Yeah. I feel as if this night's gone on for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> See, I've always wanted to play a lady of the evening, you know, with a heart of gold. <laughs> Nancy, I didn't know you were the type. Yeah, well, I know those kind of roles do take experience, but uh, anyway, I think putting me into the cell next to Raven Whitney will make this whole thing more authentic, you know? And I don't see what the good of all this is. They've already got Raven exactly where they want her, and after after Cliff gets through with her, she'll be even more convinced. Oh, but this will convince her twice as I, I just don't get it, Mitzi. The point has already been proven. I mean, there's no reason to drag it out any further. They should just tell her that the whole thing was a gag and, and ended at that. You see... Smiley thinks that Raven should suffer a little, the way Gavin did when he was framed for yeah, killing Gunther. Yeah, I know. I just hope they don't let it drag out too long. It just seems to me it's beginning to become unnecessarily cruel. Calvin, I don't know why you feel so kindly towards this woman, especially after what she did to everybody. But believe me, that is not it. It's just that it's the first time I've ever used my job to do anything that I was not proud of. Where the hell is Cliff? I have got to get out of here. They can't keep me in here like this. I didn't even do anything. It was an accident. I thought I'd die when she pulled out that gun. She's dead. I have got to stop thinking about it. Why doesn't Cliff get here? I can't stay here any longer. I don't even have a hairbrush. Hey, lady, your lawyer's here. Oh, Raven, what have you done now? And will you stop that dripping? Thank you, officer. Well? Well, what? I haven't done anything and I am Craven, sitting I can't in this help you enough to calm place. down. Where the hell have you been? I have been waiting here and for hours. You woke me out of dead sleep. I had to get dressed, you know. I don't exactly live near here. Well, I wouldn't have called you anyway, but I couldn't think Why of anybody else. Why did you attorney. call me? Because I couldn't think of anybody else. Now get me out of calm here. Calm down now. Tell me what happened, will you? How'd you get yourself into this mess? It was an accident. Oh, you didn't know the gun was loaded, huh? No! Just calm down. Take it easy. Here. 
Sit down. Oh, start from the very beginning. If you breathe one word of this to anyone, I'm going to have you disbarred. Raven, do I have to remind you you're here on the charge of homicide? It's going to be very difficult to keep that quiet. There was no homicide. I told you it was an accident. Oh, yes, of course. What were you doing in the penthouse in the first place? I was visiting a friend. A friend? Yes, his name is Lance Halliday. He works for the acting company. You probably know him. He goes under the name of Johnny Gentry. You and Johnny? Well, of course. I didn't know Johnny's real name was Lance Halliday. Well, he didn't want the other actors to know because of all his money. Johnny has money? Oh, one never knows, do one? Well, someone knew, and her name was Jinx Avery. She knew both his names. She obviously went out with him before he met me. And she saw us when we were at the restaurant together, and she burst into the penthouse and pulled out a gun, and then her and Lance started fighting. Hey, 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 give it to me! Yes, 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 let go! Ready, pick up the let gun! Go. Let go! Pick up the gun! Oh, of me! Let go! Let go! No! Give me that gun! No! I said, no! 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 Give it to me! Give it! So it was obvious that I didn't do it deliberately. I didn't even know the woman. I was trying to save Lance. Oh, that is an amazing story. Well, if you'll just bring him in here and let him talk to the police, they'll let me go. Sure, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do everything I can. Please, please, Cliff, help me. You won't run off, will you? Frankly, Raven, I'd like to know why you called me. I mean, you told me that you think I'm incompetent. You Look, think it's some I, crazy I know, guy who just tells jokes. I know, I know, I know you're jokes. angry at me because of the whole thing about the will, but please. Please help me now. Okay, Raven, look. I'll do everything I'm supposed to do. Jody, you haven't eaten anything. I know, I'm not hungry. You're tired, you're emotionally drained. What you need is sleep. Mm, that's a good idea. Except I don't think I could sleep right now. I think you'll feel better once we get back to Monticello and uh, you can put all this behind yeah, you. Yeah, I'm sure I will. Well, so much for my mission of mercy. It wasn't very successful, was it? You did all that could be done, and then some. Given the circumstances of the past, you went above and beyond the call of duty. He's absolutely right, Jody. You've handled this thing so well. You know, and at, at least now you'll have the satisfaction of always knowing that you did the right thing. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, I worried so much over whether or not I should come to Springfield, whether or not I wanted to see my mother, and then and when I finally get here, it's too late. Um... Miles, I should make funeral arrangements, right? Well, to tell you the truth, I didn't think you should have to go through all of that after all that's happened, so I took the liberty along with Dr. Hilmer of arranging for a small service tomorrow along with the burial. And right after that, we can go back to Monticello. Thank you. That was sweet of you. I, um... I guess it's only a suggestion, but do you really think it's necessary that Jody stays here? She's been so badly shaken about this. Yes, including meeting that strange guy coming out of her mother's apartment. Now, wait a second. I shouldn't be surprised. I mean, my mother always had a lot of men friends. Maybe I should be happy that someone was thoughtful enough to pay her a visit before she... Well, now, look, what about it, Jody? What are your feelings? Do you want to stay tomorrow for the yes, service? Yes, of course I want to stay. It was my idea, right? Besides, I'd feel guilty if I didn't. If you ask me, I don't think you're the one who should feel guilty. Not after what you've been through. It's your mother who should be... I, I'm sorry, honey, bad. Excuse me, I... In my big mouth. Okay. Why did I say that? Please don't worry about it. I think anything would have upset her at this point. It's just that I, I, I want to try to keep reassuring her not to feel guilty. I wish to hell I could save her from all this. You know, one thing we could save her from is any further mention of that gentleman caller, because it's just possible that his visit resulted in Leone Travis's death. What? I just mean that she was in such a fragile condition that any any kind of upset could have led to a fatal attack. Which means that well, even Jody herself That's might exactly what it means. That's why Dr. Hilmer was so concerned about Jody visiting her. Maybe we should be grateful that Jody was too late. Right? Shock, this must be. I mean, maybe you ought to have a drink or something. 
No, I don't want anything. Well, would you mind if I had one? No, I'm sorry. What would you like? Uh, well, uh, uh, brandy would be nice, thank you. Very strange, you know. Uh, my life is filled with people who aren't who they seem to be. What do you mean? Nothing. Tell me, how long have you been in Monticello? Uh, two weeks. I imagine I should be totally honest with you. This is uh, not the first time I've been outside your door. I just uh, lacked the nerve to come see you before. So there was someone there. You knew? Well, I could hear someone lurking around. Why didn't you show yourself? I was scared. See, so much depended upon seeing you. I knew that there would be quite a shock for you, and, uh, and my friends didn't think it would be wise for me to reveal my identity at the time being. These friends of yours in Switzerland? Oh, they're here now. Here? Yes, that's why I'm here. See, they didn't want me to follow, but I was just too tired of waiting. Is one of them named Libby Webster? It is, isn't it? Yes. She's come here on more than one occasion to ask questions about you. About Skylar Whitney, that is. You don't believe me, Val, do you? You look like him. You sound like him. That is all I know. Yes, I know. I look and I sound like a dead man. And that's all. My friends believe that I need more concrete evidence than that. And there must be something. If you are who you say you are, what about fingerprints? Uh, I, I, I was never arrested or drafted, so my fingerprints were never taken. That's... That's why I came to see you, Valerie. What do you expect me to do? Valerie, you are the only person who can identify me. The only person who remembers Sky Whitney as recently as three years ago. What about business associates? Surely you had friends? No. I was the kind of person who kept people at arm's length. I did most of my business by long distance. And the only friend I had was uh, Jefferson Brown. Jeff Brown, I remember him. Why don't you contact him? He died in the plane crash. Or at least, that's what I assume. You don't know? No, not for sure. Libby seems to feel that he might have been the imposter. What about your aunt, Geraldine Saxon? Skyler Whitney's aunt. No, no, you see, my friends think it's, it's too soon to try that yet. How can I help you when I can't even be sure myself? Valerie, look at me. Look at me. What do you see? Can't you see? I am the real Skyler Whitney. You're positive that's the whole story, huh? I told you everything that happened. Cliff, they can't do anything to me if I tell them the truth, can they? No, they won't hurt you if you're telling the truth. So that means I can probably get out of here tonight? Oh, wait a minute, hold on. It's one o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to be able to find a judge now. Besides, this is homicide. Wait, Raven. wait, wait, wait a minute. Out. Are you telling me that I have to spend the night in here alone? I will try, I counselor. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, get a magistrate first thing in the morning. Wait a minute, don't go. I can't help you unless I go. You know, you'll be okay tonight. I'll get a magistrate first thing in the morning. Wait a minute. I just thought of something. I know who we can call. I can call my car.